In today's video, you're going to learn how to survive and thrive as a lonely Greek nation on the border of the Mediterranean in the south of France. Of course, today's guide is all about Massalia and how you can take this nation to the heights of empiredom if you want to. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are starting our 19 faction guide videos for all the remastered factions in RIS version 0.6. All of these playable factions are going to have guides where we talk about the general overview of the faction, the strengths and weaknesses, the unit roster, the buildings, the starting position, and the difficulty of each faction as well so if you are looking for a faction check out the description down below where there'll be a playlist with all these faction guides in it and you will hopefully find the faction you are looking for now of course we are starting today from west to east and we are starting with the first faction of massalia one of the most interesting and kind of hard factions to place because if you're a veteran player Massalia is no problem whatsoever. You know, it's it's a medium difficulty faction. It's not easy, but it's not hugely difficult. But if you're a new player, this is a faction that can really, really catch you out with many different pitfalls to fall into. So, of course, today we're going to be going through those and how you can really thrive as the faction of Massalia. So, let's talk a little bit about the general overview of the faction. You start here, of course in the south of france one of the only greek factions in this region in fact the only other one is the minor city state of emporium now they are the same culture as you which is ionian so you do have that uh, to your benefit you're also allied with rome nearby as well which is another really good thing to have at the start you start with four settlements and they're all actually quite spread out because this one, if we have a look, cannot actually move past these two rebel settlements. They're blocking the way. So you have Antipolis, which is a town. Olbia, Ligastike, which is a town. Agatha over here, which is a town. But Massalia, which is a minor city and a pretty good one at that. Got some good upgrades in there all ready. Now, one of the big things that you will note with Massalia, guys, is that you are not really touching any other nation to start with. So you do have a big cushion to expand into. But overall, I've got to say, that can often be a red herring for a new player. So uh, if you are new, there are some challenges later on that you're going to face so stay tuned for the end of the video where we're going to talk about your starting moves and how you can make this nation nice and strong before you have to face the really brutal enemies that you're going to face eventually. One thing to note, guys, if you are playing along at home right now, please do not delete this ship. Don't delete this ship, okay? Please, just listen to me. This ship is not to be deleted to start with. So do not delete it if you are playing along at home right now. So let's get into the strengths and weaknesses of Massalia. And the three main strengths, we've already talked about one. So number one is that early game cushion. You have a really good early game cushion for Massalia at the start. With lots of rebel territory around you that you can expand into and really expand your economy so that you can support much larger armies. You also don't really need to worry about too many enemies nearby because they're quite far away in all cases apart from Emporion. So you don't have too much to worry about in the early game. Combined with that, you do have two minor cities nearby in Narbo and Nemausus, which are both minor cities you can take pretty quickly in the game. And that will allow you to expand a lot quicker and get some nice buildings into these cities very very quickly your third strength is the fact that you are in fact allied to probably the, the strongest military nation at the start of the game and that is rome so although you know alliances don't mean a huge amount in this game it's one of the strengths of massalia early on 
So let's now talk about the three weaknesses. And first of all, of course, you are culturally alone. You are the only Ionian place around here, apart from these two little settlements in Emporion of Emporion and Rhoda. So, of course, you will be having a lot of cultural problems in your land if you want to culture convert these places. But as we'll see later on, that may be something that you don't want to do. Secondly, you have a weak unit roster, guys. Because Massalia was not really known for fighting, you know, these guys do not have a strong unit roster at all. Not much cavalry, not, not really that much uh, infantry either, and not really anything to, to really, you know, uh, shout home about because they're just not really very good. You don't have an elite roster at all. And of course, this is historically accurate because these guys, you know, hardly were mentioned for fighting, all that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, they've given them a little bit of a weak roster, but you can bolster that with a few little tips and tricks, which we'll go into slightly later. And lastly, your final big weakness, guys, is that your mid to late game enemies are going to be incredibly, incredibly strong. So it could be whichever Celtic nation uh, wins out over here between the Allobroges, the Alverni, uh, and of course the Adui, maybe even the Belge, uh, if it's really late game, all of which have the strong Celtic roster that you will be facing. Next to that, of course, there's a big chance you'll be at war with Rome. And they have a very strong roster, as we might imagine. And finally, the Edetani over here will be a strong challenge to face. Mainly because they will likely get a lot of gold mines in their lands, guys. You can see mines already up over here. And be very rich by the time you face them. So, like I say, this is a nation that can lull you into a false, a false sense of security... Uh, by thinking that the early game's very easy. But when you get to mid and late game, if you're not prepared, it's going to be a very, very difficult slog. So here we are with the unit roster, guys. And in general, I have done a full overview of this roster, which you can find in my unit roster playlist down below. For all of these factions, I've done a unit roster overview. So this is going to be a little bit of a quick one. In general, the Massalian roster, Massaliot roster, should I say, it's pretty weak. It is not a strong roster. You even have an infantry bodyguard, which I've got to say is a very strong infantry unit. But there's only 60 of them. And on top of that, a cavalry bodyguard is so much more valuable than an infantry bodyguard in this game. Most of your roster is, of course, sort of missile troops. You've got the standard Greek slingers, archers, and akontistai. You do get a couple of special units in the U, uh, U zone, I think is post reforms. But you get the Massaliot Epibartai, which are an interesting sort of slinger spearman unit. Not much morale, but a good slinger nonetheless. Only four missile attack though. But the Massaliot archers, as you can see, slightly less range and ammo, but a little bit better overall with that six missile attack. So good archer options for you, uh, but not much in the way of infantry. You do get hoplites, but for some reason. I forgot to add them in. A uh, big mistake from me. So, but just standard hoplites, not the best hoplites. Pretty mid hoplites, nonetheless. But it, uh, for the first reforms, I also did a reforms video, guys. You can check that out. But you've got to fight 10 battles, and you get the Thuriophoroi, who are over here, and the Thuriophoroi cavalry. Standard Thuriophoroi. We've seen these boys before. 34 defense and a bit of decent morale. Okay, melee attack for a Spearman unit and a couple of Javis to throw. The Thurio Foroi Cavalry is a pretty light sort of missile cavalry. So not amazing. Got a good charge of 30, but not really a heavy cavalry that could stand up to Zista Foroi, etc. I mean, along with that, you do get the Prodromoi boys, which are fine. Oh, there's more Thurio Foroi Cavalry over here as well. Uh, and you do get a Greek General's Bodyguard. After one of the reforms. I can't remember quite which reform it is. But you will get a uh, cavalry bodyguard at some point. And the second reforms is the fact that you have to own 15 cities. And when you do, you get your good 
infantry, which is your Thorakitai. 15 cities, quite hard to get as Massalia, though. So, uh, yeah, the Thorakitai, a very good unit. Uh, the Massalia Thorakitai. Uh, I mean, all Thorakitai are pretty darn good, but these guys are really nice. 37 defense. So when you get these, you might want to get them instead of your AOR units. But we do have the Saluvian Swordsman over here. I've just put these in to represent the AOR units that you can get because they're a very nice unit indeed. 16 melee attack, boys. 16 melee attack. Very nice indeed. So, like I say, your Greek roster is not very strong. So what you're going to have to do is build level 2 or 3 recruitment. Do not build level 4 because that will remove the AOR options for you. Build level 2 or 3 recruitment and you will be able to get Celtic Noble Cavalry and Celtic Heavy Spearmen in the area. And then you will have strong armies. So you can have very strong armies as Massalia. It will just be a Celtic based army, not Greek armies. So... That is my advice to you guys. Mix in a few of these Masalio Archers and Epibartai, or if you use Zonoi, if you like to uh, use Javi Troops. And of course, the Thorakitai, uh, when you get there after you've owned 15 cities. But before then, you're going to have to rely on Celtic Troops. And to be fair, throughout the whole game. So, because like I say, the Greek roster is not strong at all so that is what you want to do go for the aor celtic troops those are the ones that are going to save you and also beat the other celts in the area so on to the next thing so now we've done the units let's look at the buildings we don't need to look at all the buildings guys it's just the standard greek building roster but let's have a look at the temples we're going to look at the temples for every nation because that's the one place where you are unique with your faction so with Massalia, we have the Shrine to Hera, the Temple to Hera, which is a really good law, uh, build, uh, law building. So you want to build this to bring you law uh, in your faraway lands. You've also got the Temple of Hermes, which is a trade income bonus one. So you want to build this in your homeland where you don't have corruption problems and also in places with a lot of trade places such as Sardinia, such as uh, Rome, if you get all the way over there. And some of these places that have a lot of, uh, you know, goods, trade goods, like uh, this place over here, which is Nemesis or Are, Are Comicia, which has a lot of trade goods. So in those places, build the shrine to Hermes. And then finally, we have this temple to Deimos and Phobos, which is for your recruitment hubs because it gives you light weapons and heavy weapon bonuses. So you definitely want to build that in your recruitment hub. So let's now talk about the bit you've all been waiting for. Your starting position and opening moves. Now there's two main strategies that you can have as Massalia. And both of them are equally viable, I've got to say. Neither of them are bad strategies, and I would say that they're both pretty decent. So, it's up to you what you want to do and what difficulty you are playing on. We are on very hard right now. Very hard, very hard, of course. Um, so, the two strategies are either to go for these rebel minor cities right away, or to go straight for Emporion and take out Emporion before it gets more powerful in this region. So, what you want to do, first of all, is to min-max your economy. We're always going to start with that, guys, in one of my videos. And we can, in fact, get pretty much all of our buildings, all of our cities, up to a very high tax rate. It's going to reduce our population growth, of course, but that is no problem whatsoever. Then what we're going to do, we're going to pick up all the troops we can and send them across to Agatha. This is if you're going for the minor city strat where we take Narbo and Nemausus straight away or you can send them all the way to Emporion but it's up to you guys. This is why I told you not to delete this ship. So what we're going to do, we're going to send you round. What we're going to not do is general stack but it's up to you guys whether you want to general stack or not. Um, you know, you have infantry generals with these guys so they're nowhere near as powerful as a cavalry general 
in general, <laughs> should we say. So we're going to pick up those boys. We're also going to come across here. And this is a little bit risky taking these troops. But we may, in fact, general stack a little bit with Faux Chaos. And we're going to send him across to Massalia over there. We're also going to designate our general and leader right from the start. And the general we're going to go for is not our faction leader. So Apollo Doros is not a good commander. Same can be said for uh, Kodros over here. He's not a great commander. He's 20, which is also good. But he has that minus one morale from Doubtful Courage. I don't know whether there's any randomness to these characters when they spawn in right at the start. But we are going to go for Aristonos over here. He is also the faction heir, so should have a few more retinues. He does have some good traits for building, etc. But he is an understanding of logistics, which is fantastic. He's confident in defense. He's also in rude health, so he's got extra general's hit points. And he's also bright, magnetic, and vigorous, which is a fantastic trio of traits to start with. He's also selfish and optimistic, which isn't um, too bad. Uh, because that doesn't really affect his general stats too much. So he is going to lead our armies. So once you've got the troops that you desire, next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our buildings. But before we do that, we're going to recruit two units. Now, it's up to you which units you want to recruit. For me, the best option is the hoplites. And remember, it takes two turns to recruit these guys now in the mod. So it's up to you uh, what you want to recruit. But for me, the two best options are the hoplites over there now we're going to build the best buildings available to us now you just want to go around everywhere and have a look what the best buildings are but you can see we don't have much money left so i would recommend personally if we have a look here building the farms in massalia and potentially the trader in antipolis but we shall have a look that doesn't actually make any difference to start with because it's not trading so probably the farms in both of these areas Let's have a look. And we can actually build farms in three of our uh, of our lands, which is really good. Now, one thing to note with buildings, guys, you want to get these guys to have ports very, very quickly in the game. So when you get enough money, make sure you pop those ports in there because that's just going to accumulate you trade over time and make you more money. When you do have connected land like this, also build the roads uh, which will allow more trade later on when we get up to paved roads now as well, which is fantastic. So guys, I'm going to spend a couple of turns recruiting more men, and then I will see you in a couple of turns. Before we do that, though, there is one thing that you've got to remember in the new version of the mod. There is extreme mode where you can choose to face more AI armies for a more extreme game. So completely up to you. If you think Massalia is going to be easy for you, then tick yes. If you think they're going to be difficult, tick no. It's completely up to you. So we've now got to Narbo. Like I say, you can choose to go after Emporion. In fact, Emporion might be a bit of a... It looks like it's a difficult target early on, but it's actually not because you've got pretty even troops. So if you can think you can beat the AI in a one-on-one -on -one fight, then go for Emporion. Otherwise, you've got a really nice target over here for Narbo. The reason why we go for Narbo rather than Nemosus is because, of course, no walls. <laughs> so, pretty easy to uh, to get these guys done. Just one thing to note, guys. Always remember, send off your uh, diplomat to go and find nearby factions to get a couple of trade agreements, all that sort of thing. Just the standard uh, tips and tricks. In fact, problem. when... The, I think the these guys are up here as well. Yep, trade rights. A most generous and proposal. ideally, we want to get trade rights from Carthage. Probably the best way around is that way. Um, so, of course, I will do a video on all my tips and tricks for RAS as well at some point. Now, we are just going to... Uh, we're going to console command this, guys. I'm not going to play it. Um, otherwise, there's no chance you get all these 19, <laughs> these 19 guide videos. So, we go also win... Attacker. And, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've just given you a nice console command there if you want it. But we can do that. And always remember, guys, when you're taking settlements, the best thing to do if you can't occupy is to enslave. If you exterminate, it tends to reduce your diplo rep around the world. Also, this population just goes away. Whereas if you enslave, that 3,087 people 
does not go away. They are just split up into your other cities. In turn, giving you more taxes, more trade, and more growth. So definitely the best option is to go for that. And now we are in command of a brand new city. Unfortunately, it is Iberian and not Greek. But we are in command of a brand new city. Now, at this point, you have some options. Like I say, if you go after Emporion, take those two, then come back after here. We can go for Emporion straight away. The other option here is to go to Sordonia or this uh, Ilibiri. This settlement has a silver mine, but uh, it doesn't actually have it built early on. So it's actually not that useful to get it because the mines are so expensive. So uh, yeah, maybe don't go for that straight away. So what we're going to do now is uh, merge those two boys together and we're going to leave straight away. We can't actually leave this turn. And we're going to see whether we can build something straight away then. Probably the Shrine to Hera, just to keep them happy. Remember guys, if you build the, you can build the first level of all temples first if you want, and then choose later. But if you build the second level of any temple, you are not going to be able to build uh, the second level, level of any other one. So building the first level does not lock you into your choice at all. But anyway, guys, I will see you in a couple of turns when we've taken Nemosus. And uh, then we'll talk about what you want to do going forward. This is the reason why I said enslaving is the best option, guys. Agatha instantly became a town that can expand straight away after that enslavement. That is why we definitely want to do that. It costs 3,200, but we should be able to afford that at the next turn and now also taking Narbo first it has a port and we are instantly now trading with Massalia which is awesome so guys we're just about to leave Narbo and you can see it's very unhappy 65% but when we get the shrine to Hera it should be happy again what I have done is removed the garrison from Agatha combined it with the garrison from the army and that should be plenty and after a few turns they should be a little bit happier have a little bit less unrest and should be ready to go. So guys, we are sieging down Nemesis. I would say that this would be a pretty hard fight to fight on the battlefield, especially with those Celtic swordsmen and their cavalry. Uh, but what you've got to be, you've just got to be mega aggressive, guys. And uh, of course, we console commanded that. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We console commanded it. But if I was fighting that, I think I should have won it. So at this point, two things to note guys when you have uh, settlements bordering each other they trade with each other when you don't have any bordering uh, you know just bordering rebel settlements like this over here they do not trade at all so you want to have settlements bordering each other that's why when i think you've taken out emporion you should go and try and take these settlements you can see very big garrisons though but now we've taken nemesis and instantly we are making a lot of money. But I want to say one thing. Moving these guys across here, we've had to reduce the tax rate in here down to normal, at least. Maybe even go to low uh, if it starts rioting. But take, uh, you know, uh, long-term gains over short-term gains. If you'd left, you know, the army in there, you might have gained a bit more money overall for a couple of turns. But by moving across to Nemesis... And, uh, you know, putting the tax rates down here, we are going to get so much more overall. This is already making us 1,200 a turn, which is fantastic. So always prioritize those long-term gains and aggressive expansion before you prioritize the short-term reward of maybe having a little bit extra tax rate in there. But our army now is a little bit spent. So what we're going to do, we are going to send it all the way home and uh, we're going to take these guys out and see whether they will be happy in fact they will not be happy at all so what we're going to do we're going to leave Phokaios in there instead actually he does nothing for the happiness wow you do nothing oh 10 percent so we're going to leave Phokaios in there we're going to repair this that should bring us an extra 15 percent due to law do we have that in there already? 30% of law. That's coming from this building. And I guess it is actually still registering, even though it's damaged. Um, but of course, I'm going to go Shrine to Hera. Um, 
So what we can actually do is leave Aristonos in there instead. And we're going to send this army back to Massalia. We're going to get them all retrained. That's going to cost us a lot of money, <laughs> as you can see. But we're going to spend a couple of turns retraining and also training an extra hoplite before we move straight on to Emporion and take those guys out. Now, second thing to note, guys, like I've said previously, is the fact that you want to mold yourself on the RNG you get. This is a tactic that I am presenting to you. But for example, if Emporion comes and boat bombs you the first or second turn, then take Emporion out first. Or say Rome just comes and sails over and attacks you. You're going to have completely different priorities. So make sure that you use those priorities to the best of your ability and prioritize based on the RNG that you get. So guys, we've taken a road and we are sieging down Emporion. I did auto-resolve this battle. It was a draw-out battle. If I'd played it, I very likely could... Uh, could have destroyed this whole army and taken the city in one fell swoop. Uh, but one thing to note, guys, when you get into these cities, make sure you destroy that Emporion recruitment there. That's going to give us loads of extra cash. Now, I wanted to just take stock of where we are. This is our situation right now. We've grown by three settlements from the start. We are a few turns in, probably turn five already. But we do have two Greek settlements here. So you can see we're in here and we've already got it happy without even a garrison at all. And we are about to take another minor city with a port, which is fantastic. How I've been prioritizing building, guys. So you can see we are building governor's villas in these places because they expanded pretty quickly. And the reason why I'm prioritizing these buildings is, of course... Because once we get to large town, we can build ports. And that's what we're going to try and do is build ports in these regions. Allow them all to trade with each other. And that's going to generate loads of money going forward. So guys, we have taken Emporion, another minor city with some nice buildings and another port in there. Already making 1,600. And we've not done anything to the city yet. Of course, we're going to destroy this building because we can't use it. And we are making 7,000 a turn now. Only five turns into the game. I think maybe closer to 10. I don't think that's quite right. Maybe the uh, four turns per year hasn't fully adjusted yet. Uh, but let's talk about what we would do in this situation going forward. We've got Faction Destroyed, Emporion, of course. This guy's also wealthy now, which is great. So, we've consolidated the nearest best cities we could. And taken out the nearest threat to us, which is Emporion. Which is a really good place as well because of the ports. So what will we do going forward? Well, ideally, we are going to leave this army over here. Potentially with Phokaios as the governor of Emporion to bring extra money. Because he has some traits that will bring money. Uh, more tactical stuff to be honest, but a bit of influence, all that sort of thing. Hopefully, he can get some good traits for uh, building cash up as well, which would be great with Aristonos as our main general. So, we'll leave you, and we'll also put you into road, and that will allow us to go up a couple of tax brackets, maybe just up to normal for there. I'm going to bring the ships across. We're going to get everyone but Philo uh, Phokaios out of the city. And we're going to send them back home to Massalia. And we are going to retrain these boys. So that we're going to spend all our money pretty much on that. All that juicy money that we got. That is what we would do. And then what I would recommend you doing is recruiting a couple more units. And going after, you know, combining your lands over here in the east. So that, first of all, with Soluvium, because it doesn't have any walls, always go for the ones with the worst walls uh, first. And, uh, yeah, go for those first. Then try and combine the lands by taking Aegina and Decaiatium. But at this point, it's kind of up to you. What I would try and do is consolidate most of this region here, including this settlement here, Illiberi, because of its silver mines, and prioritize building farms... And ports initially. So that all of these areas are all trading with each other. 
and in very short time, you will become quite rich indeed, which will be fantastic. So that is where your next steps would be, is consolidating this little corner and then the rest of this region here as well. Now, a couple of tips, guys. First of all, do not go east. <laughs> as tempting as it looks to take these cities without walls here, do not go east. I stress that a lot. Unless you want to face the full wrath of the Romans early, then uh, do not go east. Because even if you are on an easier difficulty, medium or easy, it's very likely, if you're bordering the Romans, that they will attack you because their strength ratio to you will be so much more that they will just want to attack you and the fact that you're the player. Remember, AI diplomacy in this game is a handshake agreement, not a signed contract. So when they border you, even if you're allied, very likely they're just going to bring the hammer down and kill you very quickly in Indeed. So that is one thing. As tempting as it is to snipe these cities, I wouldn't recommend it. Because there's a couple of cities in here that uh, they can take very quickly and they'd be bordering you straight away. And probably just attack. So uh, don't do that. Consolidate your strength first. Then, the second thing, guys, that I wanted to note is in these Celtic lands, even in Massalia as well itself, but we do have a level 4 recruitment hub. If we go to recruitment... You have Massalia Recruitment 1, which keeps it Celtic, but brings a bit of Ionian in there as well. But we've got number 2, and you can see these units. These units are so much better than yours. Maybe not the sword, uh, the sword Warband, but the Celtic Noble Cavalry. That's where you're going to get your good cavalry from. And then level 3, we have access to the Celtic Heavy Swordsman, an absolutely beastly unit. So... You know, going towards the medium to late game, most of your armies are going to be Celtic Noble Cavalry and Celtic Heavy Swordsmen with a few sort of Epibarti thrown in for missile attack because they're a decent missile unit uh, as well. Uh, maybe some Massalio Archers if you want Archers instead. But that is what I would recommend is as quickly as you can once you've set up a good economic base in this region taking all these cities is get a couple of recruitment buildings into Nemosus or a couple of the other Celtic areas and start recruiting Celtic units because overall they're a lot better than your Greek ones and you'll have Greek led armies with Celtic units as the uh, the main armies which is quite interesting to be honest and they should be good enough to take on the Romans now remember like early on when we've done this expansion guys um, this is where the difficulty lies because these garrisons are massive as well. So if you are an inexperienced player or playing on very hard, very hard or harder difficulties, these battles are going to be brutal and bloody. You may have to come back and retrain a lot more than you are used to. So like I say, Masali is a very difficult faction for uh, inexperienced players. So if that's you, I would not recommend these guys to you. Pick a slightly easier nation in Indeed. So, like I say, consolidate southern France and then the choice is up to you. You can either go north through the Celts or just fight them off. You can go down into Spain. I would recommend not going further south than Emporion early on because if, I, if we toggle Fog of War, the Editani and the, uh, what are these guys, the Aravachi, both have decent or really frustrating rosters to fight. And they normally will expand quite quickly up in this direction. So it's a similar thing to the Romans. If you expand down here, then it's very likely you're going to be fighting these guys early on. Instead, take the easy road. Take all these uh, settlements that are not bordering uh, enemy factions. And consolidate your lands. Get rich. Get a strong Celtic army. And then you can go after all of those factions. And like I say, imperative to keep a relationship with Rome for as long as possible. As long as possible. Because even if you're an experienced player, Rome is a difficult challenge. A very difficult challenge indeed. So any extra tips then? What I would say is uh, to, of course, take all your generals and govern with them. We have moved a few boys around. We've got this guy now, one of our younger guys who came of age 
in there. We've got these this guy governing over here. These ones, of course, are not governed, but we did leave Phokaios over here to make sure he governs. And hopefully we'll get an academy in here at some point to uh, to build him up and make him an actual good <laughs> governor. Like I say, use the AOR troops and also go for trade and mining farms initially because they're cheap and give you an instant boost to cash. But after that, go into the trade. So if we say, for example, got river ports here, you can see an extra 100 for a 2,000 building is not too bad. 20 turns to repay itself. Not bad at all. How about the Agora over here? Probably not so much, no. So when these areas start trading a bit more, these buildings will have a bit more of a benefit. Let's have a look at Nemesos. Yeah, you can see. Uh, with this port being built here, 452. That's why I'm saying build the ports, guys. So, for example, uh, these guys, yeah, these need to expand a little bit more. Say here, if I uh, queue that in, how much is that going to generate? Yeah, 162. So this trade is going to be very, very useful going later into the game. But this has been my starting guide, of course, guys. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed. But let's talk about the difficulty of this nation. Like I say, if you're an experienced player, it's probably going to be difficult, but not horrendous. Probably a three and a half to a four out of ten. Where, uh, sorry, out of five. Whereas if you are an ex inexperienced player, this is a solid five out of five campaign in terms of difficulty. For me, I say it's a very hard campaign. You don't start with very strong armies. You start with foreign culture all around you. And you don't have that many avenues uh, for expansion. But I think it doesn't go all the way to five, maybe four and a half because of the ability of that cushion. But like I say, don't get caught out by that mid to late game you're going to be in for a very, very, very hard time because you're going to be fighting Celts, Romans, and Iberians on three different fronts. Which, uh, yeah, if you want to do that, be my guest, my friends. Be my guest. But anyway, guys, I hope this has helped any of you out with this guide. It's taken me an absolute age to film this, so make sure you do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out for more of these faction guides and more RAS content and Total War content going forward. But thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe, and I will see you all again on the next video.